What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Parker Goes Carnivore. I'm your host, Ryan Parker, and today we'll be cooking browned butter bites for the first time. I'm pretty excited. I've heard nothing but good things about brown butter bites, especially if you're on the keto or carnivore diet. And so, uh, yeah, let's just jump right on into it. So here we are. I got all my ingredients laid out, which I'm going to use, and we'll go over those in a little bit. But I wanted to talk to you about why would anybody want to eat just straight butter for a snack? And if that is at all surprising to you, well, there is a whole massive movement going on right now where people are only eating meat, eggs, butter, salt. It's called the carnivore way of eating or the carnivore diet. Keto's certainly been a trending topic as well. Carnivore just takes it to the next level. I have been practicing the carnivore way of eating now, going on my third year, and it absolutely saved my life. I have become so much healthier because of this way of eating, and it continues to just blow my mind on how good I feel and how much it has just improved my overall life just from the way I've been eating. So with that said, you should probably go check out my other videos. Last year I produced videos every week what documented my weight loss and my mental health and all my tools that I used to make sure that the carnivore diet was a success. And two videos in particular, which you should check out, one of these, I documented my first year of the carnivore diet and how much that helped me and what I changed and where I came from. And then the second year on carnivore and how much I improved overall over the course of last year. So that's where I'm coming from. When I think of a snack, you know, I'm not craving sugar anymore. I'm not craving carbs. What I'm craving is fat. I have switched from craving carbs and sugar to fat and salt. So a fatty, salty snack is just heaven for me. And that's what we're gonna be playing with today. So what is brown butter bites? Well, it's exactly what you think it is. It's butter that's been browned. That's it. There's only one ingredient to the brown butter bites, which is butter. Now what butter, you might ask? Well, you can pretty much use anything, but the way I cook my food and the way I drink my butter coffee in the morning, yeah, that's right, I drink butter coffee in the morning, I drink it with non-salted, grass-fed, grass-finished butter, usually Kerrygold. Unfortunately, there's a massive Kerrygold outage right now, and Costco isn't selling it anymore, Safeway is not selling it anymore, so I've, I've been forced to go a different route, and I've picked up a couple different options of butter for us today to look at and talk about. So having a fat bomb as a snack really curves those sugar addictions if you're just getting into this carnivore way of eating or keto lifestyle. You want to avoid sugar at all costs. Even artificial sweeteners can really mess with you and it can trigger an insulin dump in your brain so you think you're getting the sugar and your body is changing to accept that sugar even though it's not really getting it. So the way I've been successful keeping the sugar cravings away is, is completely eliminating the sugar and artificial sweeteners in my life and it has had a profound effect. Brown butter, super simple. We're gonna heat some butter up. We're gonna change the consistency of it. We're actually gonna brown some of the milk and it's gonna turn into this brown particulate at the base of the butter. I hear it's gonna smell amazing. I'm really excited for that. Excited to just try this out and see what everybody's ranting and raving about. So let's take a look at all the tools that I have. It's so simple. You don't need all these tools to do it. You don't even need grass-fed butter to do it. You just need butter and a pan and you should be good to go. But this is the way I'm gonna do it. I have a feeling I'm gonna you know, modify and evolve this recipe, maybe even add some salt or bacon in the future just to make it even saltier. We'll see. I have lots of great ideas and I can't wait to just experiment with all of them because um, this is definitely right up my alley. All right, so let's take a look. Here we have all of the different butters that I found. Here's some German grass-fed butter and this is unsalted. I know I love salt, so I know I'm gonna wanna add salt, so I'm probably not gonna use this this round. Here we have some organic butter sweet cream. This is just Costco's organic butter. It's unsalted as well, and um, not my first choice because it's not grass-fed, but you could totally use this. I'm sure this would be perfectly fine. What I'm gonna use today 
is this Finlandia. Imported butter from Finland. Milk from grass-fed cows, non-GMO ingredients, free of artificial hormones, unsalted. So I'm gonna use this. I thought this was salted, but I'm just realizing for the first time that it's not. That's okay. Let me grab some salt. So since that is unsalted, I'm gonna use this Maldon sea salt flakes, and I'm gonna just float this on top once it's all done. This is the best salt in the world. Oh my gosh, I could eat this stuff just raw, especially if I'm on a long fast and I'm doing just electrolytes and water. Oh, this stuff is the jam. I'm gonna take this butter right out of the fridge. I'm gonna chop it up into smaller chunks. I'm gonna heat up this pan. The pan we're gonna use today, this is a nonstick pan. The reason I'm using a nonstick pan and not a cast iron, because I would normally cook with a cast iron, is because of this really light colored base that it has. As you see, as it melts down, the butter will start to bubble and then all the milk will start to brown and they'll start to separate from the butter as the water evaporates. So you wanna make sure you don't overcook the butter. The longer you brown the butter for, the darker the little particulate gets at the base, the more flavor profile is gonna be extracted from it. And so I'm, I love flavor. I love intense, intense flavors. I wanna get this butter browned as much as possible before burning it. And then what I'll do once it's perfectly browned to my comfort level, I don't know how far I'll take it. This is my first time doing it, but we'll certainly try um, getting it pretty far deep into a dark brown. Then what I'll do to stop cooking it is I'll transfer that butter right to this Pyrex little measuring cup. And then from there, I have these awesome little candy silicone trays that I got from Michael's Arts and Craft. Probably Hobby Lobby has them as well, or even Amazon, of course, has these silicone rubber molds. And we're then gonna use a measuring spoon and put it into the mold, grab the butter with all the little brown particulates in the base, and make our little brown butter bites. Once that's done, we'll throw it in the freezer, wait 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll have our brown butter bites. All right, that said, let's get to the chopping block, cut up some butter, heat up the pan, and get this process started. Chop the butter up, have it a little more evenly spread out. I'm sure this is a giant waste of a step, so maybe I'll just try throwing the whole stick on there. Seems like it would, wouldn't make a big difference anyway, so. Um, mm -mm -mm. Butter, butter, butter. Love me some butter. The trick to this is just keep stirring. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring, and you wanna keep stirring because you don't wanna burn the butter. Simple as that. Um, you know, we got, we got a little bit of time here before it melts, but so what will happen is the water will start to evaporate from the butter and then it will foam over. Then once the water starts to evaporate completely, that's when we'll start to see some brown particulate at the bottom, some little just brown, it's gonna almost look like sugar almost, like burnt sugar. Once again, this is my first time doing it, so I'm not sure, but I've seen enough videos and, and read enough little blog posts on, on what it's supposed to look like. So I'm confident that uh, it should be blatantly obvious of when it is. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. I wish you could smell this right now with me. It is so good. I mean, come on. It smells like you're walking into the movie theater as a teenage kid. Mmm, that is awesome electric stove top, which isn't the best, but it has this dual zone thing. So I got, I got maximum surface area on this pan right now at a medium heat. And we're just gonna let this evenly cook down and start to melt. And then it should start to bubble up. And I bet you it's gonna smell even better when that happens. Benefits to fat over sugar. Well, pretty much everything. Our bodies need cholesterol, it needs fat to survive. I mean, after all, you know, mother's breast milk is pretty much all fat. That's what we 
needed to consume to build that brain up at first section of our lives. It's essential to all of our organs. Every cell in our body needs cholesterol. And sugar is just not natural. You know, of course you can find it in fruits. You know, all the sugar that we're eating these days is just horribly mass produced in so many different forms. It's so chemically treated. It's, you know, built out of a lab in some senses and so far from the true nature's way of producing sugar that it's just not healthy for us. And it's found in the ultra highly processed foods that are surrounding us. You know, the grocery stores are just chock full of them. I'm really enjoying eating the way we evolved, right? You know, this is, this is the way we ate. We ate, we hunted, and we gathered. And, and we, you know, we would fast, and then we would have big meals after a big hunt, um, seasonal berries, things like that. I don't eat seasonal berries right now because I'm still trying to lose weight. You know, I'm, once, once I lose my weight and I get to my goal weight, then I'll start to back off and maybe start playing with some, um, you know, low oxalate foods that really don't bother me. But for right now, butter, beef, eggs, salt, chicken or pork if it's around, but butter, beef, egg, salt, let's do it. That's what I'm talking about. Butter, beef, egg, salt, butter, beef, egg, salt. All right, yeah, this is bubbling up really nice. You know, it seems like it's boiling, but it's not. It's just evaporating. And it smells delicious, as I was saying. These are gonna be perfect because what I'll do is I'll throw them into a mason jar and then I'll throw them in the freezer. I'll snack on them here and there, you know, if I have a little craving. I'll also throw them in my coffee in the morning because supposedly the flavor is similar to like toffee. So that might have a really cool twist on my morning coffee. Normally I just put in butter and that's it and I froth it up. So having these brown butter bites should add a nice little flavor to my morning coffee. Um, I'm sure it'd be good in tea as well. Getting creative down the road, finding some way to make it crunchy. Bacon bits definitely has some weight. I hear good things. Uh, be probably playing with that in the next week or so, depending on how this goes. So this is definitely an inexpensive, cheap snack. It's easy to make. There's only a couple things that you really need. Butter, a spatula, a pan, and then, like I said, you can pour it directly in a pan and make a sheet of this, but I think, uh, I think the molds is more fun and kind of more original. Uh, have a little design, it just makes it, makes it more fun. Tell you right now, my dog's super interested in this. <laughs> she was like, what are you doing up there? That smells really good. All right, wow. So I can kind of see it. It almost looks like shadows from the bubbles on top, but it's not. It's actually, Part of the milk solids, and those milk solids are actually being toasted almost. They're being browned. So that is super cool. Yeah, you can really start to see them come out now. So I know we must be getting closer to the end than on the other side. So this is probably the most critical time where you really need to watch it and make sure you don't overcook it or, or leave it without stirring. Keep on keeping on. But yeah, that's so cool. You can see this particulate really come through now. And it looks like just little granular pieces of sugar that's been browned, but instead it's milk that's being browned. I like that. That is super cool. So once again, the longer you leave it in, the more flavor you're gonna get. And then it gets to a point of no return, then it quickly just blackens and gets burnt. So that's turning pretty dark here. I think, I think that's about it. Hmm, I don't know. Kinda wanna keep it going. Nope, I'm gonna pull it right there. That looks awesome. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it into, let's get this over here, turn that off. Pour this right on in. nutty flavor, Sm smells like toffee and butter in here. That is super cool. They're a little, little dark. Hopefully they're not too burnt. We'll see. All right. So now, that is done. We're gonna take this and go pour it into our molds. 
So I'm making sure I get some of that brown from the bottom and fill these up. Some of these molds are bigger than others, so I just want to make sure that I make it even. You know what might be really good? I'm thinking as I do this, it's like a, a baster, like a turkey baster. I have a turkey syringe, like a, a meat syringe, but it doesn't have a valve on it, so it'll just leak out. But something you have the first pour be the particulate. I think that would be the best. So now that that's done, let's go throw it in the freezer and let it cool down and coagulate. So I forgot one important part, forgot to salt it. So I'm gonna open that freezer back up. I literally just put it in there and um, I'm gonna just sprinkle some salt. Oh yeah. I have no idea if it's too much, too little, but knowing me, it's gonna be perfect. All right, I think that'll do it. A little bit of salt in each one. Check you out a bit. All right, it's been about 45 minutes. These brown butter bites should be nice and butter colored again, not translucent. And let's pull them out, get them out of their trays, and give one a shot, huh? The other look. Oh yeah, nice. Check those out. Just gonna press these right out. Oh yeah. Got my little music note. Let me pop all these out real quick. Haha, <laughs> sweet. So that is all of them. All of their little molds. <laughs> cool, here, let me show you what these look like. So there you have it. Get the butter, and then, it almost looks like chocolate. That's all the little brown milk solids that got toasted. And the little, the little robots. Super cool. Well, there's only one thing left to do. That's to give one of these little guys a shot. Oh, this is a nice dark one. Let's see. Mmm. Oh, whoa. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. Mmm. That is dangerous. But I don't see myself just pounding these down. Like, that's a very, very big flavor. And really rich, nutty, creamy. Ah, oh, delicious. Absolutely super fun. And I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan. That's awesome. How cool is that? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna throw these into a mason jar, throw them in the freezer, and they'll be good to go. They'll keep for a super long time, and whenever I would like one, just pop one out of the freezer, and there you go. Wow, that's incredible. Really, really enjoy that. I think adding the salt really helped. I'm glad I did add the salt. I might, I'm definitely gonna try unsalted butter next time. And then also, want to start experimenting with other foods like bacon, mainly bacon, because why not, right? So that is a wrap on my brown butter bites. Definitely gonna explore how to further better them, salt level, other types of additives, whether that's bacon or maybe some seasoning. Nevertheless, I think salt or salted butter is gonna be perfect. Definitely finishing it off with that flaky, delicious Maldon salt was the best. I thoroughly enjoyed cooking these brown butter bites and I certainly will be making these on the repeat. They're super easy, they're super fulfilling. If I do have a craving, I pop a couple of those and I am good to go. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Let me know what you do with your brown butter bites 
or if you have any other carnivore foods that you want me to explore or make, I will certainly be happy to do that. That's all I got for you today. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of your day. Go make yourself some brown butter bites and get down with it. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me get the information out to the masses. You know I love you all so much, and I'll see you next week. Peace.